everyone welcome to the lecture series on advanced structure analysis the current lecture is on plane truss analysis using flexibility matrix method so let us see how to analyze a plane truss using flexibility method of analysis so now for example i have it <coughs> I have this truss which is statically indeterminate. So we need to find out the degree of static indeterminacy for the truss. So the degree of static indeterminacy in this truss is m plus r minus 2j. m is number of members, r is number of reactions minus 2 2 times number of joints. So this comes out to be 10 members plus 4 reactions 2 here and 2 here and 6 joints 4 plus 2 6 joints and total degree of static intensity is 2. So now that means in this if you observe 1 is external static intensity, second is one of the member is redundant. So by assigning the coordinate to that and as the structure becomes redundant, sorry, structure becomes release a determinate structure by removing the hinge and providing a roller and removing that one of the redundant member. This becomes a statically determinate truss. Then this the one of the member removed it, it becomes one of the coordinate. That means this will be a unit force in the member and in the coordinate 2 we will have another unit force. So by using the method of joints we can find the member of forces for each of the members for each case separately. So there are two things here one finding the member of forces due to the live load which is like 300 and 600 kilometer we regard it as a P forces when find the member forces due to these unit forces that is in the coordinate direction we regard it as Ki's maybe this is K1 and this is K2 due to this unit forces in each of the coordinate direction all the member forces we call it as Ki's then it is good to know the G identification of zero force member because trying to do the method of joint for every joint take, takes time. So it's easy to identify the zero force members quickly. Using the virtual work method, we can find out the displacement in coordinate one direction and coordinate two direction. So that is the internal work done must be equal to the external work done. External work done is the load into displacement will be equal to the summation of all member forces square by EI, EA that is delta I that is the direction whichever direction coordinate direction we are looking for due to line load is nothing but P into K I L by E I for all the members from 1 to M. This is due to live load because due to live load we have P. And the flexibility quotients are nothing but K I G uh, K I K J into L by E I for all the members. Once we determine this one, so we can use the compatibility equations and before that we can use a table form to put everything like members a b b c a f f e e d c d and e then l by e i is a, a factor we can find out for each members l is the length a is area of cross section will be given e is n smaller the material will be given and p is a force in the member because of the length 
K1 is a forces in the all the member because of the unit load in member FC. And K2 is a forces in all the members of the truss because of the unit load in the coordinate 2. So then P K1 L by E I for all members, P K2 L by E I for all members, the sum will become delta 1 L, this become delta 2 L and this will become delta 1 1, this will become delta 1 2, this will become delta 2 2, very simple. So this is nothing but my virtual or method. Right? This is a simply I am summing up. This is delta 1 1, delta 2 2 and delta 1 2. Then using the compatibility equations, the delta into P equal to delta minus delta L. So this delta L delta is the, the displacement which is already there in the coordinate direction, maybe because of temperature or because of a lack of it and delta L is a displacement because of the light. So this delta is flexibility portion. So taking inverse of this delta is this side. So we can find out the P. So P becomes delta inverse into delta minus delta L and this P meaning that P1 and P2 the two unknown forces in those members and the final force in each of the member will be nothing but the P force which is because of the labor which I already found out plus K1 times P1, P1 is up to here, K1 is the member force because of the unit force in the coordinate direction 1 plus K2 is the force in the given member because of the unit force in coordinate direction 2 into P2. So this will be a, this will be a total force this will be a total force in each of the members. So if suppose the problem related to lack of fit then this delta here will be that. So simply substitute deltas whatever the lack of fit in that member whichever member is there that it should be in the coordinate direction or if there is a temperature. So whichever the member is constrained to displace that will be the delta. So remaining as usual. So now it is good to know little bit a uh, concept on identification of zero force members. So one important concept is in an axial member, in, in a collinear member, if two members are collinear, the whatever force in this member will be same as this member. Whatever force is here, there the same force in this provided is there is no other force here. In the, uh, two member forces. If there is another two member forces. This suppose if there is no other external force on the joint, the external force could be because of reaction or applied force, then these two members will be a zero force members. If again I repeat, if there are no external force on to this joint, these two members will have a zero force member. For a three member forces, if these two members are collinear, collinear, the third member will be a zero force member. Provided there is no external load onto this joint. Using this concept, we can look at a simple example here. This is a truss due to load here. We can find out. Look at here. This member here. This member, this member is a collinear member, the member other direction is the zero force member. Then by re we remove this, when I remove this member, so these me two members are collinear members, this left out member will be a zero force member. Okay. Now, 
this is done. Now look at here carefully. So because of this force, so this particular uh, support will have only the orbital moment. So if this reaction is collinear with the, this member, so this whatever reaction is coming here, so no vertical. So this will have a vertical force. Right? Then if you look at this member, this is collinear. The perpendicular member, um, uh, the member, uh, the, uh, other other member which is not collinear will be zero. So this is what this how we can find out what are the members zero plus members. So other things will be easy to find out other member forces. So similarly, we can think of this another example here. If you look at uh, member this, let us say A, B, and C, and D, E, F, G. If you look at A, F, A, G, F, in this, so these two are collinear, that means this is zero force member. Right? Now, if you look at A, B, and B, C, this becomes zero force member. Because this is gone, only one member is there. These are collinear, so zero force. Then here now A F and F E is a collinear members. So this will be zero force member. Then again, this is gone. So G B, B F and F C are not there. Then A C and C D are collinear. A C and C D are collinear then C E will become a member with a zero force. That's all our internal members having zero force. So we can find out simply this three member forces. So that's like this we can find out the member forces. And for, for you to practice there are few example problems we can work out. Thank you.